Nothing. Nothing's going on. This TikToker is being accused of being the next family channel to crash down in flames. 17 Diapers Mum got famous for all the wrong reasons. By showing the state of her house with dirty nappies all around the room. And since then, the internet has latched on and this situation has only got much more disturbing. Allegations of abuse, refusing in multiple videos to feed her child, leaving a child out in the cold and refusing to buy a jacket for them even though it's eight degrees all this whilst being an actual medical nurse mental all of this really suggests it could potentially be another frankie situation and we need it to stop so hello everyone, welcome or welcome back, I'm Jip Baz and today we're talking about Hannah Hayat because she's been hit by every single corner of the internet at the moment. A medical nurse and TikToker, she has really brought a massive divide to the internet and her child seems to be in quite a bit of serious trouble because of the way that they act, her and her husband, on TikTok with them. Infamously blowing up on TikTok for showing the 17 diapers video where she shows the state of her house after having having a child with postpartum depression. And I'll show you briefly now, but it really does get much, much worse from here. If you want more videos like this, please do hit the like button because it helps out the channel a lot. And also subscribe if you're not, because I'd love to see you back. So this so-called nurse's takes are terrible in quite a lot of areas. And it did start with the 17 diapers because it almost feels like a little bit of a flex what she's doing. Let's pick up all the dirty diapers I have lying around my house right now. If I counted right, that's 17 diapers. I am currently in New York City because of 17 diapers. She then goes on in the video to show the entire state of her room with like all the mess as well as multiple uh, nappies that are just littered across the floor. And well, this really did spark quite a lot of attention from her. And I feel that this led to her reading into and going further into rage bait. But I'm not sure with all of this going on, why you would want to rage bait if it is rage bait. And if not, it's weird. She has a child that she has just given birth to and then she also has a toddler and having a toddler have to be around this situation where she's got literally dozens of nappies all littered across her floor is obviously not a healthy environment and this environment really does get darker and deeper into it as we'll cover in response to this to all of the backlash she actually decided to make a response video and it only asks more questions you know the other day when I said that I don't typically have diapers around my house? Today's not one of those days. First of all, this is the state of my room. This is all clean. This is all dirty. Diaper. Diaper, diaper. Well, I mean, she's got dirty uh, nappies in the clean part of the... <laughs> of the room that is also a mess. And it really makes you think what is running through these people's minds when they decide that they're going to post stuff like this on the internet. The main theme around Hannah's uh, videos is around postpartum depression, which is after having a child, quite a lot of women could go through periods of severe depression from it, just as the hormones start to rebalance. And this is where she gets the majority of her support from. But she also has a husband that can also help clean up this area. And and as well, when you get to the point of having like 10 nappies on the floor, like, come on. They're all dirty. They're all being used. Like, it's so grim. And you've got a toddler running around throughout the entire way. Surely at that point, you start to think there's a problem and fix it. And I can tell you there are three diapers out in the hallway by James's room. And there are probably six or seven diapers downstairs. That's just how the day is going. Some days I have my life together and sometimes I'm just living in postpartum. Like, I don't think it's an excuse at all by saying that you've got multiple, dozens at this point, uh, nappies that are just littered across all of your house. It's ridiculous. My understanding with nappies is that once you've used them, they just go into a bin. So why haven't you just put it into a bin? Why do you have multiple, like, littered around your living room? That sort of thing. It's so easy to put it over. And I understand postpartum depression is a thing. Thing. It really is, but not in this way, and it shouldn't be normalized. Remember as well that Hannah is actually a nurse, like an actual nurse in an actual hospital, right? So surely you would think out of everyone, she would have a better understanding of how hygiene works and how bad it could be to leave stuff like this on the floor for so long. But also, as we'll get on to, it does seem that her morality and her understanding of things is a little bit tapped. I need to fold my clean pile put that away and then replace it with a new clean pile. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just never ending. So 
And I need a shower. I don't know. And I can hear the baby crying downstairs. Cool. Well, maybe if your baby's crying downstairs, you probably should be downstairs and not waiting to finish doing a TikTok, just talking about how much of a tip you're living in. Like, come on. I just find it so weird the way that she tries to spin being very unhygienic with things like nappies. I can understand if maybe you have a little bit of a mess. Everyone does, everyone goes through it, but to say that there are like nappies on the floor everywhere and you're kind of fine with it, fine with it enough to go on TikTok post a video of you talking about how much of a mess it is as opposed to actually fixing the root cause of the problem which is the shit tip whilst you also also mind you have a toddler crawling around everywhere and a baby downstairs that you're not looking at whilst you're recording this video and this neglect to her children really does ring through the entirety of what i'm about to show you Although to a lot of people there was a massively overwhelming response of what are you doing, sort yourself out, it is very bad for the children that are growing up in this environment. There was quite a lot of backlash from it as well from people that were saying that she was doing the right thing. Which even led to a hashtag 70 diapers sort of response where people were posting responses of their experiences and how it is acceptable. Historically to be a woman has never been easy. When other women heap judgment and criticism, it is just the ugliest, most shameful thing. And well, what she's saying is generally right by then also qualifying it by saying women attacking other women is wrong. I just find that kind of attack line really, really dumb because it is saying that, well, if you're the same gender as me, we shouldn't be criticizing each other. And that makes absolutely no sense because if we didn't criticize each other, we would never get better at certain things shameful thing the most hurtful thing fortunately many have come to this video to tell their own stories of 17 diapers kindness is free and when we are able to show our humanity to other people that are in a position we've been in we lift them out of exile a little bit and we let them know it's okay there are times and seasons of our lives and they pass this will not be forever but her little ones are loved and taken care of and that's what matters. And well, the sentiment for that is shortly right in a way that postpartum can really affect people in depression sort of uh, aspects. As somebody who has suffered with depression, uh, not the postpartum part of it, I I'll, I'll be honest. I understand how it takes you in, it consumes you, and it makes life really hard. So I can understand as well that a lot of women, after they have had a child, have also suffered with these sort of things. But with videos like this, with 270,000 views and hidden likes talking about this situation, and it's going wide. I find it really harmful and damaging to normalize the type of thing like leaving shit everywhere in your house while you have a child to and a toddler just crawling about. And you can normalize the aspects of this mental health problems that go on, but you can also do it in a way which makes it that the entire act of doing things like leaving diapers everywhere is not normalized because that is not right. For example, I see a lot of people in the comments talking about like, for example, here, I have a 14 month old son and a five month old daughter. It's tough, especially when you're on your own and both babies needing you at the same time, which I can understand. But in this instance, she has a husband that is there to help and look after it and also to manage the symptoms of something like that they should be supporting each other so for her to go and do this it's mental to me normalize the right things not the wrong things with people sharing their stories as well you got like this one my 17 diapers are so bad i could hide in the closet and cry so my oldest kids didn't see me i had to call my doctor and tell her i was having scary thoughts in my head i had to be put on medication didn't shower for 12 days straight but my babies were bathed it's a terribly sad thing that happens to people and I'm sorry that in this case with this woman Kendall Smith that it happened to her like I said we normalize the right things the depression that is linked with things like this but then also saying 70 diapers means a baby was changed 17 times loved and cared for it doesn't really because 17 17 right uh, it, it doesn't at all that is an insurmountable amount of them and then you'll also see her contradict herself in the future as well because actually in one of her TikTok videos Videos, she said that she doesn't even change them if they've only had a wee, which is just mental. I mean, I have a million of these, but last for, but at least for this video, um, I'm not changing my kid's diaper when they pee. I've never done that. Do you know how expensive diapers are? I have friends and people that I know that like, oh, they peed, we have to change their diaper. And I'm like, oh, they peed? 
Literally, I will change his diaper if he poops. Or if it's like a very full diaper. Like, I don't think I need to explain it to you that sort of nappy rash. Uh, keeping them on is actually harmful to them and can really irritate their skin. Also, yeah, they cost a lot of money, but kids cost a lot of money. And I wouldn't bring a child into this world if I knew that I couldn't financially support the child. And she definitely can, and we'll get on to that. In my opinion, I just think she's trying to be tight with it uh, and also a little bit rage baited because she probably does do that every so often. But the idea that she's coming on here as a nurse and saying that is actually astounding to me. Also, even putting on this comment if you agree. Just trying to get as much affirmation as possible for doing something that is actually harmful to your child is mental. Children are a lot of work and having to do something like this multiple times a day, up to like 10 to 12 times a day, is really something that is hard to do. But as she's already had a kid before, she will understand this. And then also by saying that she's just half arsing it, it's mental to me. I, I don't understand. To be a nurse and to be doing stuff like this on TikTok and talking about it in such a nonchalant way, it really rubs me the wrong way. But her mistreatment to children only gets worse. Because you've got her saying statements like this. I'm a mom to an 18 month old and I'm sorry, but a pat on the bum doesn't hurt them. It helps them on the long run. Once again, trying to normalize something that is, in my opinion, very wrong. You don't need to be physical with a child in any way, shape or form. And for her to even go as far as to say it actually helps, so she's encouraging people to do it. What kind of messed up world are you in? Are we back in the 1960s? Being physical has many, many, many different side effects from doing it. So for her to even suggest it is ridiculous. Remember once again that she is a nurse so she should have compassion and understand how to treat people as well as children. So for her to be saying this and this leads to the main thing and the main problem that people have seen in the past couple of weeks around her. Because she says these physical actions towards her child is totally fine as long as it's uh, in a good way. And well, for some reason, she decided to post this video here where she's with her son and her husband puts a hand near and the child, unfortunately, starts flinching from it. Clearly going against what she's just said. Like the little mochi mochi ball things These are so freaking delicious and i feel like at this point they're just a vegas tradition for us in fact my husband and i went to vegas <laughs> Obviously, it's such a terrible situation. The first clip that I showed you went really viral, and the second one didn't go as viral, but there you have two instances of a child flinching at something being put near their head. And what Hannah is doing there is, because I've already shown you, you can already see that she is accepting of using physical actions on her children so that they are able to quote-unquote learn. And there are two documented instances that, uh, for some reason, this Hannah has decided to include in clips on TikTok for people to see all over the world, where her kid is definitely flinching from this. My understanding is that uh, fear is taught into us because of the experiences that we've gone through, and also that children, especially toddlers at this point, about two years old, do not have that sort of perception of any sort of fear, unless something has been put into them, such as like you've seen. Clearly shows to her that it's a normalized reaction of why she wouldn't include include it, you would think so. And this really brings up wider questions of how is her child actually being treated because it is terrible to even see this. What a lot of mums were doing on TikTok is they were posting their own versions of this where you can clearly see that the child is definitely not reacting in the same way. And there were so, so, so many of these reactions on TikTok around it that only affirms the idea that there is definitely something darker going on behind closed doors, although these are all allegations. And there's much, much more here that only makes your head scratch further because it's so, so normal for a child to not react in this way when something is coming towards them. And this would really tell me, at least from body language, that there is something darker there. But these two associations are not actually what she initially went viral from, because if you didn't know, she did get viral before doing another certain type of rage baity thing. When she went up on TikTok and she talked about how she has had no care done, no help from any doctors or nurses around her actual pregnancy, which Bear in mind, once again, I'll keep reminding you, she is a nurse. Which always to me just throws a spine in the works because I'm like, surely she can't be this stupid around getting help from a doctor. I'm 27 weeks pregnant. I haven't been to the doctor at all. So let's talk about it. 
I recently mentioned that I don't do a whole lot of prenatal care in another video, and that ruffled somebody else's feathers. Insurance has been tricky the last two pregnancies, and so I haven't been able to go as much as I would have liked to, but it's also helped me realize that you can grow healthy babies without a whole lot of prenatal care, so I'm not really that worried. Obviously, the American healthcare system is terrible it really is terrible and it makes it hard but then it also asks the question of you've already gone through this uh, before where you have been pregnant and had a child so you would understand the cost implications of having to go through that so what you wouldn't do is complain about how much it costs and then just refuse to get any help or care during your actual pregnancy the whole reason that doctors are around now that specifically look after this sort of thing is because it's something that needs a very hard amount of attention to because it's a child that you are going to be bringing up into the world. If there's something wrong and it gets missed as well, that's only going to destroy your actual healthcare system and your insurance plan anyway. Something that definitely will not get picked up if you are just going in and just raw dogging it. This kind of tightness with money really does uh, drivel through all of the stuff that she says and does and also a couple of controversies coming up and it really makes me scratch my head and think, why did she decide to do this in the first place? And surely with the amount of views she's getting on TikTok, she'd have enough money as well as being a nurse and having another income with her boyfriend, husband. It's just a very twisted situation. But we finally figured out our insurance. Basically, all it took was for me to tell my husband, like, can you please freaking help me? Like, I basically, I took it upon myself to do the insurance. And I said, I'll figure it out. And I just hit rock bottom. And I was like, can you please help? Like, I don't know what to do. So the reason that she was refusing prenatal care was because not only she couldn't afford it, she couldn't know how to understand it. So she hit rock bottom before she talked to her husband. She sounds like she's really in touch with reality. What a great way to uh, make sure and protect your children that you're bringing up into the world by just deciding not to do something because she's struggling with it. This is why men are always right. This is why I should never trust myself to do anything by myself. Men are always right superior and this is why i need a man in my life is because i would survive without a man just one of another of her crazy statements that she says littered across her entirety of her content especially when in multiple clips that i will show you she's shitting on her actual husband for existing to me it comes across as maybe she's a little bit uh, mentally unstable uh, in, in my opinion but that doesn't excuse any of what's going on because the allegations only get wider and stronger and her stupid takes just continue, such as this one where she's talking about going for a run while she has a temperature. You know when she's got a kid in her belly? Not gonna aggravate absolutely anything, is it? Can you tell? I'm getting ready to go for my run. Uh, when I have a fever, I typically like to run. I mean, my husband encourages me to run, but I know it does work. It just sucks in the moment. Does it work? Does it help with a fever? I'd feel like that'd make everything worse. You know, every time you're ill and you have to go and relax, you know, you've got to stop doing things that aggravate your body so that your body can fight infection. Do the exact opposite of that by going for a run. Sounds so counterintuitive. She's also doing it in the typical influencer way of like saying like it's a good thing what she's doing when in fact all she's doing is harming herself and potentially her child. But what do I know? I'm just a random person on the internet. I'm not, you know, an, a qualified nurse. And the problems around temperature just continue with her because there's another instance with this toddler that she has where uh, she is being really weird again. Because as we said, she has a theme of disliking having to spend any money uh, on her children. And this gets a little bit further because there's a, a situation where a kid is outside without a jacket and she's giving reasons as to why it's totally fine that he's out there with no jacket even though it's nearly freezing hey i'm sorry but i can't spend 35 dollars on a toddler jacket i know he needs one obviously i'm not just gonna say like don't take his blanket please that's brother's blanket don't take it it's cold i know i can't just be like oh like it's too expensive he doesn't need to have a jacket he needs a jacket especially if it's eight degrees outside did you get him a jacket no and she tries to justify it multiple times in this video and I don't understand it at all. If you can't afford a kid, don't have one. And this is why the problem with family TikTok channels are just terrible. The same with YouTube channels that are family channels because it really does leak out all of the terrible parenting stuff. And what she's doing is justifying to not only herself, but also to her followers saying, it's totally fine if you do this as well. Like money's tight, especially uh, in United States and the UK. Money is very tight at the moment. But what that doesn't mean is that you should bring a kid into this world if you can't afford it. This Hannah 
has a full-time nurse salary, she's also got a husband that is also bringing in money. And then she's also got TikTok where I presume she makes quite a bit of money on there as well, considering the view count that are on most of her recent videos. The child is freezing. The child doesn't have a jacket. So why would you be like this? While she's snuggled up in an actual jacket, there is a child that is hers that is actually struggling with the cold. It's so selfish to herself. And I also would feel like this is a form of aggression towards the child as it is. Show that your child doesn't deserve basic human needs, which is disgusting. And this is why apparently the CPS are on a case now. This stuff obviously also went viral again because it's so obviously bad. And it's another feather in the cap of her acting like she just doesn't give a shit about her children. And another massive thing which really there is so many uh, bits of evidence around this is around the feeding of her children, especially her newborn. Specifically her toddler because the way that she acts around him is odd as we've seen. She said patting him on the, on the ass is a good idea. And there are serious sentiments of neglect here unless, like I said, it's potentially for a TikTok rage bit, but why would you try and TikTok rage bit for views if you're going to end up losing your kid from it? More so what I think is that uh, all of these sort of actions and consequences from the actions all stem from her thinking that this sort of behavior is normalized and allowed in any form of relationship where you have a child. When in fact, in my opinion, it comes across as serious neglect. One of the most disgusting ones that I saw was them feeding their newborn a jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> just pointing a camera in the face of the child and then taking the piss by laughing about it both her and her husband are laughing about this situation of feeding the child a jalapeno i find this absolutely disgusting like it is something that can be very spicy especially especially if it's been like brined and then in the middle of a fast food restaurant which i don't think there is even a drink in sight for the child they're feeding them a jalapeno very evident as well that this child is barely at actually taking solid food stage so feeding them that is not only dangerous it's also something that's very spicy which is going to upset the kid's stomach it could do a lot of bad things to that child but instead what she decides to do is do it for a tiktok video because it's funny and then because it's funny upload it and i just want to know what's going through her mind also around the sentiment of being very tight there is a issue here where uh, she posts it again as thinking like it's some sort of funny normal thing that everyone does where they've refused to buy the kid any food or give the kid any food that they brought from home for this meal and whilst dangling it in the face of the child the entire time they decide to give him a little treat <laughs> Just bear in mind, once again, that is grim and it is definitely not normal. Chewing up a tortilla chip, dipping it in salsa. I don't know if it's spicy salsa again. I hope not. And then feeding it to a little baby. Uh, and what? With the caption being, Pov, the only way your baby is calm at a restaurant is when he's being fed, but he can't eat chips and salsa. So he can't eat chips and salsa, so... What do you do? You give him chips and salsa, you just crunch it up a bit. And I was thinking when I was watching this initially, I was like, surely this kid is not even on solids at this point. So for them to even be feeding this child with that stuff is dumbfoundedly stupid. Maybe the best way to keep a baby calm in a restaurant uh, when you're eating a lot of food around them is probably bring the food for them so that they can eat too. Once again, another idea of just potential neglects that I just find disgusting because as you say right here you have accepted that the child cannot eat this stuff so why are you doing it and when she does really seem to treat her kids like shit, as you can see in multiple videos I've shown you and will go through still she posts stuff like this and it really makes your head scratch unemployed hungry dirty sad 
Because, yeah, the child is clearly hungry in many instances because you've shown that of the children having struggles not being able to eat straight away. You've also shown multiple instances of your children being sad, Hannah. Yeah, that is something that you do do. And the children probably are also dirty because you refuse to change their nappies. Unless it's right at the last moment, which is disgusting. And this sentiment doesn't just carry on with just the newborn. It also leads with the other child as well, the toddler. Such as here where they're recording each other on TikTok whilst having a meal and the child, the toddler in question, is just sat there, not able to have a meal, just staring at the food. I can't. Yeah, the next week we save a lot of money while we eat out is we don't order drink, don't drink alcohol, we're not ordering sodas, we literally like, eat our drink for free. 100% of the time, if you have leftovers, we're bringing it home. I see so many as you can hear there, she's talking about how she saves money whilst eating out. And well, you're talking about eating out, but you can't afford a jacket for a child. Sounds like you really do have your priorities a little bit misconstrued. But also, as you can see, the child is very obviously not eating anything, unable to eat anything, because you're not offering them anything, and it's just sat there, and it's so sad to see. She's just doing a casual TikTok mum voiceover to this situation. Obviously, it looks like it's normalized and normal and she does this every single day so it really does ask questions about her as the more you see the only more amount of insurmountable evidence come to the front which really makes you question her moralities that's how you can keep on vacation always making sure your hotel has breakfast always doing research on restaurants before you actually get there on prices not blowing a ton of money on drinks and as you can see the kid starts getting very distressed and I, that's purely as you can actually understand from this entire experience because they're not getting any food. They sat there watching their mum and dad eat whilst they are hungry and unable to touch anything. And the act of just not being able to touch anything and getting upset from it, that tells a lot in itself. That means that your kid is used to being around a table, for example, out in public, not being fed. And the irony, the absolute irony of talking about how to save money, well, you're eating out. What you could have done is gone home, got some food together, even though you're on holiday, which bear in mind, holidays cost money as well, and get a big meal for, you know, all of you, multiple times over. And it's either her priorities out straight in the way that she thinks about money, which I genuinely thinks the case but i think it's more of a this child has seen this happen all the time is very used to it and the mum is disgusting in the way that she's acting this is how you save money this is how you save money this is how you save money whilst also saving money by not feeding your child but then also eating in front of them and taking the mick out of them whilst also doing a tiktok and voicing over it talking about how much money you're saving it's levels of immorality that i really can't even delve into and the weird thing to me is even when she does share stuff with her food it also even gets weirder as you can see from here after working three 12 hour shifts back to back while 37 weeks pregnant cooking was the last thing on my mind tonight and tell me why the only things i see on social media lately are wingstock mukbangs yeah 100 percent wingstock was for dinner tonight also this was the grand finale to my husband's carnivore diet just the usual yapping but the kid doesn't have its own portion it's not allowed to uh, eat a load of chips it seems in my opinion it feels like it doesn't watch in the entire thing and also this bit where although he did get a dip in the ranch uh, it's then left to look at the lid and get a little bit out of it for 10 days but after seven days he was like i've had enough of this but still 10 pounds in seven days is ridiculous and children are natural sharers so for him to be so hesitant on only picking up like one little one at a time it feels wrong to me and it also really does tell a story in my opinion once again as well notice she's ordering food and yapping over it meanwhile the child is having to have a couple of chips because also obviously that's not for a toddler a very healthy diet and i understand that they can have treats from now and then but also you very clearly in this sort of talk about the food afterwards for the child or anything like that so it seems like this is all they've got some chips from a takeaway doesn't seem like a very very sustainable thing and also you two sitting down whilst also making the child stand up to eat which is weird to me 
Like, there is a sofa right here, right? And not only just a normal sofa, as you can see for the bottom, there is an extra bit there where the child could be sitting. But what I imagine the woman has done, Nurse Hannah, in this instance, I bet she's made the kids stand up so they can all fit in the actual TikTok so they can watch it, which... I find grim as well. She probably doesn't have like a, a camera stand or anything like that for her phone. So she's made the kids stand up to eat, which uh, what? It's just so many levels of wrong with everything you see from them. So even when they're sharing, it's wrong. But when they're not sharing as well, it leads to more drama because there was another controversy that happened around the child uh, being not treated very well at all by the parents. Well, clearly the father decided it's not time to be sharing at all nine dollar lobster rolls i think we got a lobster roll like flicking the kid's hand away are you all right mate uh, like how how grim one it's rude two it's dismissive three like why are you flicking in the first place there's better ways to do it with your child it's just so dismissive and everything just adds up to a calamity and a calamity that she could not escape from because she ended up responding to all of this situation from the flinching uh, to the flicking and it really does ask more questions than what it answers obviously as well the comments are turned off on this video as they are with absolutely everything that she posts now because of all of the backlash almost like she's trying to run away from her problems so the fact that I even have to address this right now is kind of insane. Social media is just, it's a scary place. And I never understood people that much when they said they couldn't share their kids' faces online or they couldn't share much about their kids. I didn't really understand it. After all I've shown you, right, uh, for her to come on and say, the fact I even have to address this now in such a dismissive faction, like, what? You saw what I saw, right? You've seen everything I've seen. The entire point that she's in trouble is because of what she's been sharing herself because people are pattern spotting. It's just absolutely ridiculous from her. I understand it. But it's crazy. If you were to know me in real life, this whole lazy husband thing, it's satire. My husband is the sweetest, nicest, kindest, most loving, most nurturing father in the entire world. We'll get onto the uh, dismissiveness of what she says that's apparently satire. It really sounds like satire. That was sarcasm. But also, from what you've already seen in this video, you can kind of make your own judgments about how much of a loving, amazing father he is by flicking off his kids' fingers when they're trying to eat. There's the strongest father-son bond that I know of anyone else. And it, it makes me really sad that social media has turned it into something or me maybe it's i don't some maybe that's it makes me sad that I've, i guess i've turned it into something like that i don't know in the video that you guys are all freaking out about um they're just playing they all they're all they're always playing they're always playing where they scare each other they're, james is obsessed with dinosaurs and bears and when they look away and they come back and they scare each other and they and they play like when they throw something they, they like they'll play throw it you know you like psych them out you know and they flinch and whatever like well i don't think that's really it nurse hannah is it really because it's so obvious to see that your kid is flinching in a way which is not normal for a child to flinch which kind of insinuates some sort of ulterior motives that have happened that would cause your kids to act in such a certain manner when you try and narrow it down to just one instance one video which has caused this backlash when it's actually a calamity of events through multiple multiple videos it's very dismissive to the cause and you're obviously obfuscating that to the point where like I'm, if i'm trying to talk to my husband i can't because he's always playing with my son nothing nothing's going on from the moment that my husband wakes up in the morning to the second he goes to bed he is only thinking about our children and our family and what's best for us and there's never that's never not on his mind he is constantly thinking about his children their futures i'm sure he is uh, how about yourself how about how much of a problem you are we're just gonna sit and hide away from the elephant that's standing in the room staring at us also very typical of a social media res apology response where you start crying because obviously if you they start crying that means that they're going through a bit of a hard time not because potentially they might lose their kids but actually because uh, they're losing their own skin trying to make it more believable uh, i i just See this is dismissive you can't believe everything you see on social media you just can't i promise and i pr 
when I promise this, I, I'm serious. Nothing is going on. You no, know, I don't really owe anyone an explanation. I could just be like everybody else. So when stuff like this happens, I could just keep quiet. And I thought about keeping quiet, just kind of letting it blow over. Oh, you don't owe anyone an explanation for all of your stuff that's going on. Right, okay. I, I, I believe you. I believe you. Right. Also saying, well, yeah, nothing's going on. Right, okay. We agree. Everything's fine now. We're, we'll just ignore everything else around it. It's true to not believe everything you see on social media, but it's really obvious to look at and see this stuff, and you can make a quick judgment just from having a glance. And also, when you spot a thousand coincidences in a row, it kind of doesn't become a coincidence at that point. It becomes a pattern. But obviously, she won't recognize that when she's trying to save his skin. But I thought, I don't want that. I don't even want the thought of that out there. That people, that pe I don't want anyone to suspect anything, to that even to be questioned whatsoever, that me or my husband, that we do not love our children, that we do not treat them with anything other than love. Like, it's crazy. Right, okay, so smacking a kid on the bum when it's been bad is apparently uh, something that is done out of love. Refusing to buy a jacket for a child that is freezing in the cold is just done in love. Not feeding your kid multiple times, feeding your kid a jalapeno when it's literally not even on solid yet, that is just out of love. And now you're starting to see how uh, incredibly dumb this apology is and it really answers nothing. Like, it's crazy. There's nothing. There's nothing going on. Well, I'm sure if there's nothing going on, you wouldn't hide comments so people could see what's going on. It just brings up more questions than it answers because she's focused on one specific incident, which wasn't the majority of what people were saying at all in the slightest. And she narrowed it down to then say, well, oh, there's nothing is going on. I promise, I promise. And then also bringing up the uh, tears and like looking you're, like you're about to cry. Obviously, it's a very emotional situation, but it's almost like she got caught out as opposed to to that she's actually done something wrong as to why she's crying. Everything that you put out gets stuck on the internet forever. So maybe I should believe what I see on social media when it's something that you've posted and I've looked at it with my own eyes. There's so many things that she just thinks is normal in these sort of uh, relationships uh, with, between a father and a child and also a mother and a child, which I would not agree with. I would even go as far as to say it's total neglect. And even after this response, she did keep the comments up for a bit someone called her a certain frankie uh, and which is another uh youtube channel that was for children which if you don't remember is a youtube family channel which ended up having some very very bad allegations sent towards it and obviously even though she's deleted all the comments at this point she had to respond to that one the fact that i'm even being compared right now to ruby frankie is absolutely comical it's it's hilarious really we live in a world nowadays where people will turn nothing into something. We live in a world where people are so desperate to become TikTok famous, they will they will post about anything to in order to get views for themselves. Sorry, Hannah, do you mean like yourself, where you're posting just everything and just yapping? Dude, your TikTok lifestyle stuff, like you are literally doing that exact thing that you're saying people are just posting for the sake of it now just to get views. That's exactly what you're doing. The comment is a joke and it's not meant to compare and contrast between the two. It's to say that this is of the same ilk. And in my personal opinion, from what I've seen, I've seen forms of neglect on her TikToks, which do make me think that it is somewhat similar in that sense. But no, you just can't believe everything that you see on social media, even if she's posted it herself and I've seen it in my own eyes. They don't care if it's gonna bring someone down with it. They just wanna become TikTok famous. The fact that my children are happy, they're healthy, well nourished, they're running around playing, that should be a pretty good indicator that, that everything's just fine, it's great. They always have a clean bum and never have a dirty diaper on. The fact that this is even a thing right now is something that I just, it, re it really is, it truly is really funny. Yeah, that's so funny, isn't it? That's really funny seeing all of this neglect go on. They've always got a clean diaper on, apparently, even though she has gone and said that, well, if they've had a wee, they don't need to get their diaper changed, which could lead to a lot of problems. A lot of aggravation of the skin. It would be not nice for the children. So, she's lying there. And also that they're always happy, chilling, enjoying themselves. 
did you see a minute ago where like they were like ha- at a table and the kid wasn't eating and it started like getting very upset if you see the multiple instances of flinching like it's so stupid that she's even trying to dumb it down to this level when there is clearly so much information out there that really leads to a conclusion that which is against what she is saying it just totally boggles the mind Honestly, with social media nowadays, I can sit down and eat a sandwich and that would go, that would be controversial for some reason. I've had a lot of friends in my life ask me how to get started on social media and on TikTok specifically, and I've always told them, only do it if you have ridiculously thick skin. You cannot post your life on social media if you don't have thick skin. Well, if you're doing it, yeah, you need thick skin, and that's why you've turned all your comments off. You do need thick skin for social media. That is a true point, but it also... Uh, you really need thicker skin when you're doing stuff that you're doing. I get insulted almost every video, so I can only imagine the kind of stuff that she gets, but a lot of what she gets is very valid because it really asks questions, and there is uh, currently people trying to get her reported to the CPS so that they can investigate this. Like, oh yeah, the kids are happy and healthy and enjoying themselves. Meanwhile, as you can see, the kid is, uh, in this instance... Uh, looking like they're about to cry because food is not being given to them. Like, there's multiple instances where the kids look very upset because you're not feeding them very well. So, yeah, they're very well fed and there is nothing going on. And it's really funny that this situation is being even somewhat compared despite so many similarities. Because as well, honey, you're not seen as the bastion of morality that you think you are. Because the way that you talk in your videos seem to always be quite bigoted and also... Um, there's a couple of problems that you have said yourself, such as here where she has been uh, accused of racism. My father-in-law's like, hey, you guys go ahead, we'll get a refund. That Mexican in the background, the guy we rented them from, that was watching the whole thing go down. Which that sits with me the wrong way. Because obviously saying someone's uh, race is not a bad thing in itself, but it's the specific way she says it. It's the that Mexican. It's like charged. And it's talking about a negative situation. So she's giving negative connotations towards it. To me, that I feel like that's just another oversight that she just kind of got into and not actually thought about what she was saying. But she felt very comfortable uh, putting this on a TikTok. She also is on about sleep training her children, which is kind of weird. Lines of sleeping, we started sleep training at four months old, and honestly, I think we should have started a little sooner. My assumption here is that children should be getting whatever sleep they need whenever they need it, and also sleep training, that sounds like it's some sort of like regime. I can only presume this means in her own mind that this helps them actually uh, be able to get away from the kids for a bit. But as you can see with the kind of neglect that she already does, uh, introducing sleep training what is that? And not only that with the kids, even though she absolutely loves them, she seems to be against vaccines. I can only presume as a medical nurse that she would think this gives kids autism, even though that is one of the oldest tricks in the book of stupidity. When it comes to vaccines and giving medications to my kid, I do so much research and I'm so hesitant with all of it. Great for a nurse to be going on TikTok and saying that you're hesitant against vaccines, against protecting your children. It is a big right-wing trope, especially with like RFK at the moment, for saying that vaccines give kids autism and they're terrible for society. Even though statistically, they are one of the safest and most effective things that can be done in medicine to prevent illness and disease spread. Refusing your kid to have a vaccine only will, in future... Uh, make it very hard for them if they ever have that kind of disease to survive or to have any long-term effects from it. So I find that bad, very bad, especially from a nurse that has literally gone through some form of medicine degree. Like, surely you should understand that at that point. But maybe, maybe I'm just putting a bit too much uh, importance onto the American education system, considering that 21% of all Americans are illiterate. And to my majority of the American audience, I'm sorry I have to bring that up. I just had to say it. I just know that if you're watching this, you definitely can read yourself. Throughout all of this, she always goes on about her husband and quite a lot of stuff, uh, which is really dismissive to a husband who also seems to be a bit weird himself. They both seem to be quite terrible, in all honesty. And even though she says, I love my man at the start, well, clearly she doesn't really give a shit. So my husband claims that he's incapable of ever washing the dishes. So I'm teaching my two-year-old that way he never tells his future wife that he's incapable of washing the dishes. Why is she teaching a kid how to wash the dishes? Like, it, it's... No, no. It's so bad. Like, why do you need to do that? And then also just giving a slight dig at your husband who is clearly going to see this video. Yeah, it's satire, isn't it, apparently? 
I have been up all day long and I'm going to work night shift tonight, but first I've got to make dinner for my lazy freaking husband. He claims that he is incapable of cooking dinner for the kids tonight and him for himself, so I have to make it before I leave. I, my lazy husband begged me to make him fresh bread after cleaning the entire kitchen myself, putting the kid to bed by myself, and then wearing the screaming baby on my chest. This man had the audacity to beg for homemade bread. So what did I do? I got my butt in the kitchen and made him some bread. A lot of people latched on to this stuff because it really does seem like she doesn't give a shit about life and she doesn't like how she is existing. She thinks it's satire she thinks she's just taking the piss but it's also very negative towards the husband and also i'm sure the husband is listening to this tiktok and he's really happy with what's being said on online to hundreds of thousands of people and it's no wonder with everyone dogging on her for this on top of everything else she had to respond to the least most important thing out of this entire situation also you know i mentioned earlier about how much money she makes uh, and apparently not being able to afford a 35 dollar uh, <laughs> jacket for a child is it's way too much. You know, while she's eating out and going on holiday and that sort of thing. Well, if only she didn't post what her actual income statements, what she has got for her budgeting as a fresh new mum on TikTok that would potentially go against everything that she's been saying. Well, of course she did. Doesn't seem ironic in the slightest considering everything that she said, is it? We were saying that she gets a total income of $5,990 and then she deletes everything from it, including like date night, savings. Uh, for some reason, there's nothing for the children on here, leading her with a total of $535 in profit once she has budgeted everything. So she's making $500 a month from this after taking away all of her expenses, which asks a couple more questions, Hannah. So if that is the case, why can't you afford to feed your children? Why can't you afford to buy nappies for your children? Why can't you afford to do a lot with your children? Why can't you have a coat? Well, it's ridiculous, isn't it? it it's so obvious that either this is TikTok rage bait or the other stuff is. But if the other stuff is TikTok rage bait, she is potentially losing her children for this exact fact, which I find just astounding. I also found another instance here where she's talking and doing a voiceover uh, whilst doing her usual TikTok. And her husband seems to be quite rough in the background with one of the children with one of the hands. Uh, it does look quite dismissive uh, and it seems like she says um we're on camera which why would you post that if you are on camera and you know that it's on camera and it could be misconstrued in a wrong way but i i don't know it's just all just a calamity people are starting to latch on and cancel her and one of the people that i did see was someone called anthony blackwell who's had his video deleted so i'm unable to show you it but he talks about uh finding out who this person is who nurse hannah actually is in real life and getting them reported to the cps and apparently this is going through at this point and not only that there's been multiple people that have also done the exact same thing and now doxing is never right it's never a good option but it really does speak volumes of how far this has gone on the internet. There are just so many instances of Nurse Hannah being weird around her children as well as her husband, which really do give some safeguarding concerns around them. I think it's a worrying state of affairs when even when she's responding and apologizing for what she's doing, uh, she's not apologizing at all in the slightest. It's all about all of the trolls on the internet that are coming for her. It's nothing to do with everything that we have seen with our own eyes on TikTok that could suggest there might be a bit of a problem there with neglect. Mainstream viewers articles are now picking up on it and I think that it's only going to spread further and further and become bigger of a problem until the police have a look at it and find out what's actually going on. Because in my opinion, although all of these are allegations, with what I've seen with my own eyes, it seems like there needs to be some serious looking at here. And the internet detectives, majoritively, once again, are very right. But what do you lot think? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the vid, please hit the like button and subscribe. I would love to see you back. I've been Jet Baz and I'll see you later. Take care.